Hola, buenos días a todas y a todos. Gracias por acompañarnos. Hoy tenemos eh, la súper oportunidad de estar con Agnes, que representa a SMT Berlín, una de las mejores escuelas de negocios de Europa y del mundo. Hi Agnes, thank you so much for your time, for being here with us, uh, to let people know about all the opportunities they can find at ESMT and um, of course the scholarship opportunities. We have some people logging in right now, but uh, to out of respect of everybody's time, I say we start so so we don't uh, go longer and people can can start joining. I just wanna wanna say to everyone that this uh, this session is being recorded. So if someone knows someone that might benefit from this information, you can let them know that they can find it in a day or two at our website. Um, and of course, every questions you have, you can post them on the chat and we will read them at the end. So without further ado, thank you so much for being here and I leave you with Agnes. Thank you very much, Sofia, for the introduction. Uh, hi, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. So let me uh, share, my, share my screen and uh, let's go. So here we go. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Sofia, for the possibility um, for this uh, for this webinar. We're really looking forward to have more Mexican students in the Fortum MBA class. So as you can see, I'm not alone today. I'm Agnes, I'm a senior marketing manager at ESMT, but I'm also joined today by two of our fantastic Mexican students uh, from the current Fortum MBA batch, uh, Valeria and Santiago. Um, so first, I would like to talk a little bit about the school so that you have um, a basic understanding. Uh, I would like to represent the program itself, the Fortum MBA program, and the different flexibilities uh, the program offers to students. We will talk a bit about career, uh, the career services that we offer at ESMT and how you can apply uh, to us and to uh, FUNED, um, FUNED possibility. And uh, once the presentation is over, then we will open the floor to your questions uh, as we have Valeria and Santiago on board as well. So welcome to Berlin. Uh, I am sitting in the building that you can see on the right hand side. Uh, this is a historical place, by the way, because this used to be the headquarters of the, the former GDR State Council. So it's a pretty interesting place uh, to work at and to study at. We are uh, in the middle of the city. We're very close to the um, uh, to the emblematic TV tower, which is probably the most well-known uh, building of, of Berlin. The school was founded in 2002. Uh, so we are 20, 21 years old. And the school is based on three pillars, on leadership, innovation, and analytics. And everything we do, all the degree programs that we run at ESMT, they represent these pillars. Uh, on the bottom of the page, you can see our founding fathers and benefactors. Uh, maybe you have already heard it, but uh, ESMT is a business school that was founded by business itself. We were ranked number one in Germany and number eight in Europe in the 2022 Financial Times European Business School ranking. And as you can see on the right hand side, we are also accredited. Uh, by all these fantastic institutions. So we, we wear the so-called triple crown, which is actually not that common for business schools. We're really proud of this fact. And this means also for you that your ESMT Berlin diploma will be recognized all over the world. So what makes ESMT different than other business schools? So first of all, we have a modern and relevant curriculum. Uh, especially in the full-time MBA, there are lots of possibilities to tailor-made basically your own curriculum, and you will see it uh, a few slides later. We do have a dedicated career services team, a career development center, uh, who are also uh, offering different kind of uh, employability skill workshops throughout the, the 15 month program. Uh, we do have an international focus. Our student body is extremely diverse. Our staff is diverse, our faculty is diverse. So it's a fantastic opportunity to, to be in a really international um, um, environment for 15 months or even further. And um, yeah, 
I mean, it's Berlin, uh, so certainly it's a, it's also a magnet. It's also an international city, so it's something uh, very much appreciated by our appreciated by our students. This is um, an, a general overview of what happens during the full-time MBA program. So first, in the first four and a half months, you will kind of lay the foundations of your business management knowledge. So there will be courses such as uh, finance, accounting, economics, decision-making, data analytics, operations, supply chain, and more. Uh, then from June to July, you have the possibility to, to specialize. So we offered ESMT three different tracks in the full-time MBA. Um, you can either go for managerial analytics, strategic leadership, or innovation and entrepreneurship. And we will look into these a bit uh, deeper a few signs later. Um, during the summer, from July to September, you will have three options as well. So this is what I mentioned, that the, the curriculum is really uh, can be tailor-made. And it's really flexible. So you can either go for an internship, which can take uh, from six to 12 weeks. You can go for uh, basically a, a social consulting project, to put it like this, a social impact challenge. Or you can go for an intense, uh, intense German uh, course. Um, I think that Valeria and, and, and Santiago also um, participated in this course. So they can tell you uh, way more about the details. Uh, during from September to December, there's um, there are three months to to pick your elective courses. So here you can again kind of uh, think about what uh, what are your uh, priorities, uh, what are where are your interests, so you can tailor make the curriculum even further. Uh, and also, this is the period uh, where you have the possibility to go on an international exchange. So this is also fantastic. A uh, fantastic option to um, to make your CV even more international. And during the last uh, three months, you will be working on a so-called capstone project. Uh, this is a practice project with um, where, uh, with your uh, teammates, uh, with your fellow students. You will solve a problem, a real world uh, business problem. Um, so this is basically where. All the knowledge that you got uh, gathered uh, during the 15 months can be taken into practice finally. And uh, last but not least, uh, once you once you're done with the program, there are also several post-program options that you can take. Um, one of them is the Responsible Leaders Fellowship, uh, which is a six months maximum six months fellowship that you can do in a country with an emerging economy most of our students they had to uh, they had it to uh, africa or maybe asia some parts of latin america but we will talk about this a bit later and also we have um, an entrepreneurship hub at esmt berlin which is called valley berlin and they do offer a summer entrepreneurship program as well so we have here um three different personas and with these personas, we, we wanted to um, share with you what kind of options you have. So for example, if, you're, if you have an entrepreneurial uh, wish, if you would like to set up your own business at one point, or you're looking into um, corporate innovation, uh, then you can go for the track innovation entrepreneurship. This would be perfect for you. You could also do a social impact project where you can do, um, when you can work on a, a real life problem of an NGO, a social enterprise or a social innovation. Then during the, the elective phase, there are certain courses that will, that would definitely be beneficial for you and during the capstone project you can also uh, build out your own uh, business plans that you might already have um, if you are more like um, uh, an analytical uh, mind and you like to crunch numbers then managerial analytics might be something for you you could also do an internship at a company that is um, in this um, that works in this field and there are certain electives that might be of your interest, um, quantitative methods or um, digital economy, for example. 
And the third persona that we have here um, might be more interested in maybe the German Mittelstand, uh, German SMEs. So strategic leadership track might be certainly for this person. That's something that I would recommend. Uh, they could do an intense German language course, uh, especially if they're planning to, to uh, stay in the Dach region or in Germany. Um, they could go for global industrial strategies as an elective course or uh, doing business sustainably. And again, the capstone project, uh, I mean, it's for every student in the class. Obviously, this is something that where uh, you can uh, look into uh, a bit more uh, niche uh, areas as well. So if you're interested in, in German Mittelstand, German SMEs, and then obviously you could pick a project uh, for a company, for a firm like this. And yeah, as I mentioned already, Responsible Leaders Fellowship, it's a fully supported six months project. Uh, you can see on the right hand side, a few um, projects that um, our uh, students done in the past. And uh, you will also find a few interesting uh, videos on our YouTube channel about this uh, Responsible Leaders Fellowship and also the Social Impact Project. And the other post-program option that I mentioned is the Valley Berlin Summer Entrepreneurship Program. So as you can see, it has four phases in total. And basically, uh, you can work on your own idea from idea generation till pitching. So this is a fantastic opportunity if you have your own idea, if you want to be your own boss, if you would like to um, start your own uh, enterprise and this is something that um, that would be interesting for you um, the entrepreneurship hub is in touch with with lots of different startups i mean um, you might know but uh, berlin is actually the the startup hub uh, of germany it's a fantastic place if you're looking into entrepreneurship and esnt berlin our uh, career development uh, center is really well connected so what do they do, my colleagues in the Career Development Center? Uh, they uh, do offer uh, workshops, um, employability skills related workshops during the whole year, during the whole 15 months of the full-time MBA. Uh, they uh, support you for recruiting, meaning that we have recruitment events on campus. We have a huge annual career fair. We have other kind of um, workshops, uh, CV workshops, LinkedIn profile workshops. They offer tools and resources uh, so that you can, you can find the, the employer that you're looking for after graduation. Um, they, the center also offers individual career counseling uh, by external experts. They've been with us for many, many years. and um, they and they offer this really uh, individual uh, support, which is very much appreciated by our students. Uh, so maybe you don't know the direction where you where you would like to uh, go after graduation, and these coaches are just a fantastic opportunity to to kind of get clarity on what you really would like to do and what you would like to go for. Um, and last, last but not least, there are also corporate visits on and off campus that are provided by our uh, CDC team. Our students, um, they have dedicated days for, for these company visits. Uh, it's not just about Berlin, uh, but they also had it to, to Munich uh, a few months ago. So um, yeah, we have lots of alumni all over Germany, so it's always nice to, to reconnect with them during those uh, visits. Admission requirements. So what are we looking for? We're looking for excellent analytical ability. We're looking for an international outlook. So if you have any kind of international experience, then please put it in the online application form. Um, we're looking for a team worker. Our cohorts are relatively small, um, which means that there's a lot of um, a group work happening and we want to make sure that you're a person that you can um, uh, work well uh, in such a diverse international um, uh, team. Um, we are looking for leadership potential. Obviously, it's an MBA program, so it's an advanced program. We're looking for the, the leaders of the future. And um, we are also looking for people who are um, who like to collaborate, uh, who have the willingness to, to learn from, from others. 
Um, in order to apply, um, as I mentioned, uh, the whole application process is, uh, is happening online. So obviously we would need your professional um, uh, information about your professional background. So we would need your CV. If you're applying for a full-time MBA, then we would need at least three years of professional work experience. Um, this does not include uh, internships and uh, work experience during your study while you were involved. So we're talking about um, uh, postgraduate professional experience. We would need also your transcripts um, about your previous degrees uh, in the application. If you are applying for scholarships that are available, yes. Uh, if you're applying for those, there will be a dedicated question uh, in the application form and you need to answer to that question and able to be eligible. Um, you will find the full list of scholarship on the, on the website. Um, so those uh, might be helpful for, helpful for you uh, next to FUNED uh, founding, of course. We will need two professional recommendations and, of course, an entry test. Uh, we accept GMA, GRE, so if you're planning to apply for other schools as well, those might be really good options. Um, but we also run our own admissions test. It's called BAT, uh, Business Admissions Test. There's a fantastic webinar done by uh, the MBA, um, the Director of MBA Programs at ESMT, Rebecca Lote, and she she's walking you through the whole uh, admission test. So I really recommend you to have, have a look at our YouTube channel. And last but not least, we would need a proof of your uh, English and the level of English. So if you've been studying or working for many years in English, then there's a possibility to waive um, an IELTS um, or a TOEFL language certificate. Um, yes, so this is a special webinar today. This is a, this is a FUNED uh, webinar. Thank you again for organizing this. Um, as you can see, uh, we do have a special offer with FUNED, uh, which means 20% tuition reduction for candidates of the full-time MBA program who are supported by the organization. Um, if you would like to have more detailed information, then please reach out to FUNED. Uh, the minimum requirements from our side is to have Mexican nationality, uh, a minimum um, a GPA of 8 out of 10 in the first degree and the first Mexican titulo degree, an official certificate of admissions by ESMT Berlin, and the application has um, to FUNED. Uh, there has there's a specific number of days uh, that has to be you need to apply before leaving to study at ESMT. I'm sorry. Here we go. So the final application deadline for the next intake, which is January 2024, is the 8th of November 2023. Um, we have one intake per year for the full-time MBA program. It's always January. Uh, if you would like to apply maybe for the next year, so meaning January 2025, uh, then applications will open um, in January next year, so 2024. Um, probably the first uh, deadline will be around February. Um, once we close um, this uh, intakes applications and we update the, the new deadlines, but most probably it will be around February again. If you have any kind of questions, um, concrete admission related questions, feel free to reach out, feel free to send an email. Uh, my colleagues are also happy to have a one-on-one uh, one -on -one talk with you. Um, you can also give us a call. I mean, we're available for video calls as well. And we are really uh, active on social media, uh, on um, LinkedIn. Uh, we have lots of professional content. Uh, about the school, what's happening at the institution in general, our institutes, our students. Uh, on the YouTube channel, we have tons of new videos as well, thanks to a fantastic team. And on Instagram, we're also pretty uh, uh, active uh, to show the student life, life in Berlin, all kinds of student content. And our students do, do lots of Instagram takeovers as well. So if you would like to have a glimpse of how does it feel to, to be here at ESNT and study here, then, then please do visit our Instagram account. And uh, yes, so I'm, I'm just, um, I'm not going to talk here. 
uh, anymore. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Valeria and Santiago too, who are current, uh, who are in the current uh, Fortum MBA uh, class at ESMT. They're both fellow Mexicans, so I'm very happy to to have them on board. And I will just stop sharing my screen. Here we go. Thank you so much, Agnes. Uh, yes, it would be lovely to hear from, from Valeria and Santiago, uh, maybe a general experience of what you, you found in Berlin at the school, et cetera. And then if anyone has any questions, we can happily answer them. Exactly. Um, I was just wondering, uh, Santiago and Valeria, if you could maybe introduce yourself uh, just very shortly so that the, the, the attendees know who you are, um, your background. And I think it would be also interesting to see why uh, did you uh, go for an MBA in general? Sure thing. Well, if you don't mind, Valeria, I can start because I see you're still muted. Okay, so I'll start. So hi, everyone. I'm Santiago. If you can't hear me, please let me know. I assume that you can. Um, I'm from Mexico City um, in the south of Mexico City. I don't know if any of you are, but if so, Tlalpan, muchos saludos. Um, so at the end of my, I'm a chemical engineer by I did my, my degree in chemical engineering. And after that, I started a business. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we have closed down. Then I was a little bit lost. Naturally, I switched around industries, pharma, the tech. And I thought I needed a change in my career. And that was probably one of the main reasons that I decided to go to, to go on the MBA journey. Also, it was a great. It is a great opportunity to to start over in a new place. I love Berlin. I was here three times before moving in here, and uh, the city just took my heart away. And of course, after I met Ines, Agnes, sorry, and the rest of the team at TFCT, actually Agnes was the one that made the interview to me back in the day. Um, after I met everyone, I was just like convinced that this was the best option for me. Um, after reviewing the rest of my options, and yeah, it's been a wonderful ride. A little bit tiring though. I must uh, I must warn you, it's it is intense, but it's super worth it. Um, Berlin is an an amazing city. Germany is an amazing country. And um, yeah, that would be my short introduction. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to to shoot them on my way. Thank you, Santiago. Um, <laughs> now I will I will start. My name is Valeria. I'm also from Mexico City. Actually, Santiago and I were neighbors, and we never met before coming to to Germany, which was very very funny. Um, I worked for about six years before coming to Berlin. I work uh, in finance, like in controlling. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. Um, I worked mainly in like big corporations. I worked in Bayersdorf, uh, which is the group that makes uh, Nivea, Auseri, and Curita, Slavello. And then I switched to Johnson & Johnson for medical devices. But uh, after working in finance for five years, I realized I didn't want to do finance for the rest of my life. Um, so I, I looked on like, what could I do as a career switch? And an MBA was the best option for me to, to see because I... I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So for me, the MBA was a, a great way to expand my options. Uh, why did I choose uh, ESMT? I don't know. I just really like the, 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 the program itself. I don't know, like from what everything that Agnes uh, just presented, it's a very dynamic program. It is very full, especially at the beginning, but after the first four months, then you're free to literally do whatever you want to do with it. If you're an entrepreneur and really want to get into like deep entrepreneurial stuff, you can do it. If you are very analytic, analytical and want to do like machine learning and whatnot, you can do it. So it's, but it's really up to you. No one also is not going to like hold your hand and like guide you through the entire process. Like after the last four months, it's literally up to you on what you want to do out of out of the program and out of your career. Uh, and in Berlin, I didn't know anything about Berlin, but 
the first three months in the winter, I didn't like it. But then the last three months with the summer um, experience, like, honestly, nobody can blame you. Nobody can blame <laughs> you. The winter, the winter in Berlin is tough. So I'm always saying that we need to move the starting date of the MBA because like having new arrivals in January in Berlin is probably not the best uh, marketing for the city. But yeah, otherwise. No, I, I, I must say that I actually disagree, Agnes. Like I think that due to the nature of the program being so it's intense better. at the beginning, it's better because you're very focused on that and you don't feel the actual yeah, like, and of course, you also get to know a city in the winter that it is tough on the climate and stuff, but it's also pretty beautiful. At least that's what my impression was. Um, I, I wouldn't change that, Agnes, truly. I think it's nice because is, also you... Biased, but... I'm biased because, yeah, and <laughs> the, the summer is so nice here. Like, it's just such an, an amazing city, yeah. And the school is located in, in that super nice location as well. Like, you're in the center of town. It's an amazingly well-connected city. I don't know if any of you have ever had the opportunity to come here. If you had, you you know what I'm speaking of. Like it's just full of life, and I think that the SMT actually uh, fosters and foments that with how the program is structured, with the openness of the faculty, with the openness of all of our colleagues as well. So it's like, yeah, like meant to be. One would say. Okay. Another uh, very important point, depending on what you're looking for, it's a very small cohort. So we're talking about like at least in our cohort, we are like 37 people. So it's very like we're like a little family. Like most other MBAs, it's 200 people, 300 people. So it's it's a very different like uh, interaction with each other like that you will have in any other uh, MBA. And it's something that you definitely have to take into account. Exactly. That's a very good point. We, I mean, to all of our MSc master and MBA cohorts, we're counting uh, with like 50, in average with 50 participants uh, and students. So this is a fantastic opportunity. It's learning doesn't only take place in the, in the classroom, but also, you know, between your peers. And if this is a really international cohort, it's just fantastic to, to learn things about uh, you know, from a Chilean uh, economist till, um, I don't know, a Danish lawyer. So you, you it's a very uh, mixed uh, crowd in terms of um, the industry that they're coming from, um, the professional experience that they have, the studies, the field of their studies. So it's a really enriching experience. Uh, I see already a few questions here uh, in the chat. Um, Yes, so English, uh, German, it's always a uh, recurring question, whether you would need uh, German um, to study here at ESMT or later to, to work in Germany. Um, so our official language is English at ESMT. Uh, Berlin is also a very international city. Uh, so you would actually get by with, with the English only. But if you're planning to stay here on the long run, obviously German is very much uh, a must. Uh, but it also depends. It's interesting because it depends on the on the industry that you're looking for. Maybe if you if you you will be working for an international startup after graduation, then you might not need German at all because everybody's international. The common language is English, right? Uh, but if you are going to work for um, Germany-focused uh, SME, middle of Germany, or a Germany-focused consulting firm, then this is a different level of communication and they would require German. But uh, in order to come to ESMT, you don't need uh, German. I think uh, both of you participated in the, in the German language course during the summer option. Could you maybe talk a bit about how we support um, German uh, learning at the school? Um. So I think Valeria and I had a little bit of background in German before. So before, like, I decided to move to Berlin probably in 2021, no, 2020, and then it materialized in 2022, and I used this time to do certain uh, German courses. So I had the bare minimum, and Valeria lived in, in Germany as well. I don't remember where, but in Germany. Anyways, so we had uh, this already like a standard, like a very basic uh, level. And then we first got um, 
yeah, we, we both went to the to in Lingua's uh, Schule. Sorry, I normally speak better German. Eh? That was a, a big. Anyways, anyways, um, uh, yeah, it was a full summer. It was six weeks, if I don't remember incorrectly. Uh, going to German course three hours a day, every day. It was a super immersive experience. Um, really focused. We when we were in B one, I think it was at that time, or B two, B two, B two. We were in B two, so we were focused focused on grammar, but there were also groups for A one and A two, and I thought it was an amazing experience to an, an amazing option if you actually want to stay in Berlin after that, which is my plan, and uh, I think Valeria's as well. So, yeah, it's. I, I would super recommend it uh, when you have the option to decide whether the social impact project or the internship. I recommend it to every single one of my classmates to do German. Not all of them did, but the ones that we did, we ended up very, very happy with it. Yeah. Valeria, would you like to add anything to that? or? Mm, no, for me, at the end, it comes down to what you want to do with your career. So if because I've seen people who have been living in school for 10 years and don't speak any German and they can still live. So it's 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 not that it's a must, but of course, if if you want to merge more into the German culture and like, even like if you find a job that doesn't require German, but then when you go out to have lunch, they're gonna speak German within them. So it's it's just, you can do it without, but it's just a better uh, way to really merge in case you want to stay here in the long in the long term. So it's yeah, and it applies to every culture, probably and, not just Germany. And whether to to take the summer uh, intensive course or not it depends on your career. Maybe you already have like your dream company and you know that you want to do the internship so that you have more chances of getting higher there post the MBA. Of course, go into the internship, but. For example, for me, I didn't know still what I wanted to do with my career. Uh, so doing an internship just in a random company for the sake of doing an internship was not a goal for me. Um, so I thought German was better, uh, would help me more to position myself in the future in the German um, job market. Thank you very, very much. Individual. <laughs> Uh, I see a mental you... exercise, no? The learning German. <laughs> it's a big topic. It's a recurring topic. It's uh, it's always it's a... uh, present ev at every webinar for sure. Yeah. It is a struggle. It is a tough language, but it, I really like it. I think it's a beautiful language. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see a few questions around moving from Mexico to Germany. Somebody's asking, uh, "Can I move to Germany to study with my family?" So. Um, maybe if you could talk a bit about how the process went in terms of, you know, like visa, uh, we do have a student services at ESMT. I wonder how they could uh, support you. Um, I know that we have a couple, I'm not sure about families in the program. I know we have a couple uh, from Peru as well. So many times, actually, we have students who are moving to Germany with the whole family. You know, the kids uh, need to go to the kindergarten. So setting up a new life, basically, in Germany. But first, uh, talking about the, the visa issues, do you have any um, good advices for, for our audience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had the fortune of having not, a, not, yeah, not a I had the fortune to having a, a Spanish passport, so I didn't have to go ah, and do any. Yeah. Uh, maybe but, it's a for million. me, it, it went actually very smoothly, like as long as you apply with, like I, I would, if you're applying now to enter in January, I think it would be a struggle because for me it took, I don't know, like six or seven weeks for me to get the visa. So like as long as you do everything like within a reasonable time frame, I think I didn't have any problems with the with the application or acceptance or anything. But time frame, it's it's a it's a big topic, especially because the embassy in Mexico, like the German embassy, is very picky. If you can move with your family, I mean I I don't know, but I have friends who did the MBA and moved with their family, so it's it, it's totally possible. I don't know the specifics, but I know it's possible. 
Yeah, I, I have a friend who just arrived from Mexico, and I think that what the embassy tells you is a time frame of four to eight months, two months, two weeks, sorry. So I think time wouldn't be a problem. Like he got his on the exactly the last day of the eight weeks. So yeah, it, like I think it works in general, at least on his based on his experience. And um, talking about student services, they're always like super. Uh, responsive to whatever question you may have. Like I struggled with, not struggled, but I had a lot of doubts with the Anmeldung and the actual moving in here and they were super supportive and super like answering like really precise things. I think there's a brochure as well that tells you all the processes that you need to go through when you move in here, which is really helpful. And I'm sure that it would be the same for the, for the visa, even right, though I so didn't well. do the process, yeah. So once you you enroll, then you will receive the student handbook. It's a it's a really uh, important uh, document for for newcomers to Germany. Uh, I also see questions around the the uh, the exam, um, the the entry exam. Uh, what was your GMAT score? Did you hire a coach for the application? I don't remember which uh, which uh, uh, entry test you did, but maybe if you have some advice around that. Yeah. I did the GMAT. I got, I, don't I did it four times, I must say, um, because I just wasn't getting a good grade. But then I got six eighty was my my last grade. I think that was the one with the which with which I applied. And um, did I hire a coach? I think I went to a crash course like with some uh, people. And it's just a matter of practice. It's just a matter of practice and. Not getting nervous. I think that what made me go bust on the two or three times that I did before my final one, it was the nervousness. It's not a difficult exam. It's just tedious. And if you're nervous, it's just like, uh, but if you're not nervous, you'll crack it. It's not impossible nor, yeah. But you're asking about like a coach specifically for the application process, which I know it's very common for other uh MBAs, which are very competitive. <laughs> I, I, I didn't do it. I don't know anyone in the cohorts who did it, or maybe one or two people. But um, I don't think it's necessary. As long as, long as you meet the requirements that Agnes uh, told you about, I don't think a coach is necessary. Like I wouldn't. I think yes. it's, it's not a good investment. But it depends on how many schools are you applying, of course, and what type of schools are you applying to? But like, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't do it for ESMT, but it's personal. <laughs> There's lots of uh, offer online as well, tons of coaches, but there are also lots of official resources from GMAT itself. So you will find, um, the resources that you will need to prep and yeah you can also do it um, several times so if you're not happy with the first result maybe you can practice a bit more and go for another one um so that is that is um your choice what you would like to go for as i mentioned if you're applying for several business schools i really recommend you gmat or gre because they are accepted basically by all uh, of our um, or the other uh, very good business schools uh, but we do have our own exam as well and um, that might be an option for you as well so feel free to reach out to admissions and they will uh, give you some resources where can I find more information on the types of masters you have so um, yes I didn't talk about the full MBA portfolio but next to the full-time MBA we also have a part-time program an online program is called Global Online MBA and an executive MBA uh, for those who already have seven years of uh, experience uh, including three managerial um, uh, uh, work experience years of experience uh, and we also have MSc and master um, programs that we run at ESMT master in global management master in innovation entrepreneurship and master in um, uh, analytics and artificial intelligence so uh, it's quite wide uh, portfolio um, for, I believe for, for uh, Mexican prospects it might be also interesting to look into the global online MBA this is a um, 100% fully online program. So it is definitely uh, uh, manageable to complete it even from, from Mexico. Um, Sophia, you have questions for us or we're waiting for other questions in the chat? 
We're waiting for other questions. I, I really don't have any questions for you. Just uh, I want to encourage anyone who's here, you can also open your mics and just speak up. It's a great opportunity to have two Mexican students uh, speaking to us. It, it rarely happens. We usually just have the recruiters, so don't be shy. <laughs> I always say that uh, our students are the best sources, so, you know, I can, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I can talk about for hours about the school and the program, but it's the best is always to talk to students. So, um, yeah, so once we're talking about this, you can actually reach out to students um, and not just to Valeria and Santiago, but also others. Uh, we have a pool of uh, student ambassadors. So if you want to talk with somebody and, and have a chat, just feel free to reach out. Um, we also have lots of webinars um, run by us, by ESMT. Um, so those are also good opportunities to look into how our professors um, um, are giving their uh, presentations. Um, we also have uh, open houses on the campus. So if you happen to be maybe in Europe, maybe in Berlin, uh, then you can actually come uh, here to our campus in person. And then uh, you can also sit in for a lecture. You can talk to current students as well. You can talk to admissions. There's a campus tour in this historic facility. So it's a, it's a fun event. So I encourage you to, to use the, the opportunity if you're around. Yeah, feel free to ask whatever you need. And also I've shared my, when Valeria and I have shared our LinkedIn if you want to connect and whatever you need. It's always more than welcome. Thank you. Um, is there any constraint due to age? There's a new uh, question in the chat. Uh, we don't have any uh, constraints. Uh, what I can tell you is that the, the current class, the average age is around 30, and they have an average uh, six years of uh, work experience post-graduation, uh, post-degree um, uh, uh, professional experience. And um, yeah, so this is... Um, so that you can understand it a little better, our target group, but there's no specific uh, um, age uh, constraint. If you have an extensive experience, then we would obviously recommend you to rather go for an executive MBA. Like the um, age range in our cohort goes from like 27 to 36, I think. But most of us are like around 30, but so that you see the range. All right. Yes, thank you. Uh, in terms of visa, you, visa, you would need a student visa. And uh, once you are enrolled, the student services can help you um, uh, with the bureaucracy, which is uh, a very painful point in Germany. But once you've done it, you're very proud of yourself. So that's the good part about it. <laughs> yeah. And many of us went through these steps, so uh, you will not be alone for sure. That's a bit tedious, but it always works out. That's a thing. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What we haven't talked about are the tracks that you picked. Uh, maybe that could be interesting for our participants. Uh, I'm actually, I don't remember which ones you, you picked. Yeah, we both picked the entrepreneurial and innovation one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a business once, so I wanted to keep on the idea open of starting a new business in the future. So that's why I chose that one. It had an extra uh, course on finance, which I like. So that was also a, a big, um, uh, that's what pivoted my decision towards that. And it was it was great, actually. I, I really liked it. Uh, I actually, the class that I liked the most was not the finance one. So it was another one called Creating and Capturing Value New Products, if I don't remember incorrectly. And it was just amazing that uh, Stefan Wagner is uh, an amazing, amazing uh, professor. And yeah, really interesting. I don't know, Vale, you have something to say about the core, the track? Yeah, I chose also <laughs> uh, the same track. For me, it was completely the other way around. I had always worked in like big corporations. So I not, I wasn't familiar with like the startup scene and what is actually needed to be in a startup and to work or even to um, be an entrepreneur so I wanted to learn that side and it was very enlightening I really liked it it's 
it's it's more like the same, but you have to have different soft skills. I think that the soft soft skills that you have to have as an entrepreneur are completely different. The the needs are completely different. But it was I related. Thank you very much. We still have some time. If you have some questions, just uh, put them in the chat or just unmute yourself. Yeah, there are also other possibilities that are happening on the school um, organized by our corporate communications team. Um, there are lots of uh, master classes, for example, that students can join. Um, and there are other different kind of events that are happening on a regular basis on campus. So you can certainly max out the time that you spend here on campus. Um, this is, you know, and, and you also spend so much time with your peers. It's a very enriching experience. And I talk a lot with alumni as well, you know, who might have left ESMT five or 10 years ago. And it's always so nice to hear that so many of them are still in touch uh, till today. And they're part of each other's lives. So it's a really enriching experience and you're really making uh, friends for life. So, um yeah, I'm a bit biased. I kind of I feel like uh, Fortum MBA has always been my favorite program. So I like to talk about it, to be honest. Any other questions in the chat, maybe? Yeah, otherwise, if you have anything that we have uh, admissions at esmt.org, the general admissions uh, email. And as I said, um, you have the opportunity to, uh, to talk with uh, one of our colleagues. So um, uh, we have one-to-one -one, uh, online chats as well, webinars, online events. So feel free, feel free to reach out. And as far as I know, this uh, this webinar is recorded, so it will be available later on in, in YouTube. If maybe I was too fast in the beginning, uh, the presentation you can always go back to the slides. Yes, that is correct. This is going to be recorded and uploaded in the next couple of days. You can find it in our in our webpage in the Funet webpage. Fantastic, thank you. I think there aren't any more questions. So I just wanna say thank you again for your time. Um, enjoy Berlin. I'm very jealous that you get to live in a city like that. <laughs> come and visit us, we're here. You can come I, would to, <laughs> I would love to soon. Thank you so much for your time, for your support always with Mexican students. And I hope we see many of you applying for next year's intake. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Valeria and Santiago, for being here and sharing your experience. No, thank no you. problem. And Glad to be. Feel yeah. free to reach out, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Please do reach out, connect, and uh, whatever question may arise uh, on the academic, on the non-academic, uh, feel free to reach out, and I'll be more than open to answer it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Gracias. Bye. Gracias, hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye.